When people consider setting up a trust or foundation, they often wonder, can I amend or change my trust down the road? This is obviously a major point of concern. Circumstances change, and what is beneficial or desirable today may not be in the future. For example, what if you get married and want to add your spouse, or you have a derelict kid, you don't want to get anything from the trust, or you become passionate about a cause and you want to add a charity as a beneficiary to your trust. These are all just examples that some of some things that could happen. The possible changes and circumstances are really limitless. The amendability of a trust depends on the trust agreement. Not all trust agreements are amendable. The first thing you have to do is consider, does your trust allow amendment or not? And who has the power to amend it? And what's the procedure to amend it? Some trusts, for example, are not amendable while others are. And some trusts may only be amendable at certain times or under certain circumstances. For example, some trusts may only be amendable during the settler's lifetime, or if the trust migrates jurisdictions and needs to be amended to comply with that new jurisdiction's rules. Or if certain conditions are met, like the settler getting married or divorced and they're adding and removing a spouse. That might be the only amendment that's allowed. You also have to look at how the trust can be amended. Some trusts may say, for example, that the settler has the right to amend it. Others may say that the trustee or protector can amend it. Some trusts, for example, may say that the settler has the right to amend it. Others may say that the trustee or the protector have the right to amend it. Yet others may have a more complex amendment procedure. For example, the settler can amend it with the consent of the trustee or the protector. Or the trustee can amend it with the consent of the settler or protector. Or the trustee can amend it with the consent of the settler or protector. Amendment procedures can vary widely. There's a large latitude in how you draft amendment procedures for a trust. If you already have a trust and are interested in amending it, you need to look at the trust agreement first to see if it's possible. And if so, what the procedure for doing so is. If you don't have a trust yet and are considering setting one up, you need to carefully consider its amendability and what the amendment procedure should be. Most people's initial reaction is to retain the right to amend their trust to have maximum flexibility. The problem with this is it diminishes asset protection and can have negative tax consequences. Let's say, for example, you transfer assets you want to protect to your trust for the benefit of your wife and your kids and you're not a beneficiary of the trust, but you retain the right to amend the trust. Well, what happens if you get sued? The judge could order you to amend the trust to include yourself as a beneficiary and distribute the assets to you in order to settle whatever the debt is. This would defeat the whole purpose for which you set up the trust, which was to protect assets. And if you have the right to amend the trust in such a way that you could be considered to retain what's known as a power of appointment, basically to change who gets what in the trust or to make the trust revocable, then the tax authorities will consider the assets of the trust yours and you'll still be liable for the taxes on the income generated by the assets you transferred to the trust. That's why it's so important when planning your trust to consider whether it should be amendable, and if so, what the procedure for amending it is. Like I said earlier, I generally recommend making your trust amendable, but not solely retaining the power to do so. For example, the trustee can amend your trust with your consent or with the consent of the protector. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And for more strategic tips on international tax and wealth planning, Subscribe to our email list and follow me on LinkedIn. Links below. Vice versa, you can amend it with the consent of the trustee or the protector. This offers more asset protection and generally keeps trust assets separate from you for tax purposes. Trusts are my specialty. I truly love helping people protect their assets so they can pass them on to the next generation in a tax efficient manner. I see too many people that wind up with cookie cutter trusts that don't quite accomplish what the client wanted because their advisor just wanted to pump out a template trust and get paid. I believe that a trust must be carefully planned with the client so the client gets what they want and understands what they are getting. Making money is hard enough and keeping it is even even harder. So if you're planning on setting up a trust, make sure you plan it properly so you get all the benefits that you want out of it. If you're interested in learning more about trusts and foundations, download our trust and foundation guide. I'll put the link in the bio. And obviously, if you're thinking about setting up a trust, we'd love to help. You can send us an email at info at to set up a consultation. Thank you.